Our first guest on this week's show is another tangible symbol of Notre Dame's commitment to helping its athletes perform at the highest possible level. Dr. Duncan French became Notre Dame's Director of Performance Sciences this past January. He brings to Notre Dame more than 15 years working with elite Olympic level athletes during his time as a technical lead for strength and conditioning at the English Institute of Sport. His own athletic career involved playing both soccer and American football at very high levels in his native United Kingdom. He is currently an avid surfer and has participated in that sport at many exotic locations around the globe. We are pleased Duncan is here to give us an inside look at how Notre Dame is helping its athlete improve their performance. So it was the surfing that drew you to South Bend? <laughs> Potentially not. <laughs> I think it was the midlife crisis I was going through at the time. Yeah. All right, so the obvious question that we'll start with is, tell us what a director of sports sciences does. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it's a new novel role here at Notre Dame, and I'm, I'm humbled to be, you know, to be taking on this position. I'm excited about what the future holds, and um, I see my job as, as twofold. Number one is to uh, you know, support our support services that feed into the, the sports, our strength and conditioning staff, our nutrition staff, our athletic trainers, to, to align them and allow them to optimize their services so that we can give uh, you know, great service to the sports and, and, and potentially give them that competitive advantage that will help us uh, succeed. The second part of my role I see is very much around the sports science, which is very vogue in North America and globally at this moment in time. So it's about looking for those advantages, the technology, the data capture, and how we're obviously managing that to uh, support our student athletes. Very complex. <laughs> it is. It is complex stuff. How do you, how do you, how do you decide? So, the, we're awash in claims that something will help us, right? Different different For forms sure. of technology. This yeah. is going to help you. This is going to help you. How do you evaluate that? How do you make the decision where we invest and what we do? Yeah, it's it, it's a great point, Jack. And I think um, you know the the sports science landscape is vast, and uh, it, it is. The turnover is so fast, it's, it's difficult to keep on top of it, but um, you know, I see it as, as part of my role to be aware of everything, to try and turn over each stone and understand what's underneath it. Um, but what we're trying to do is uh, look at technical priorities, to really speak to our staff um, in the respective service areas, to understand what they see as the critical pieces that are going to support them doing a better job and elevating their, their services. Um, so it, it's capturing those insights. It's working with our staff in strength and conditioning and training, the services that I was talking about, and really prioritizing so we can do deep dives um, in, in certain key areas where we can feel like we can be imp impactful. For example, uh, we talk about uh, a 24-hour athlete as one of our priorities. So just by having a deep dive on the 24-hour athlete concept, that now consumes sleep, it consumes circadian rhythms, it consumes diet, it consumes a lot of different things and allows us to really focus our energies on those types of things. M my week gets consumed with talking to lots of different vendors and, and, and people trying to sell me new technology and exciting things with bells and whistles. But, you know, we've got to be very strategic in the way we invest our efforts, our energy and our, our finances for sure. Um, along with what you were saying, how do you know where the line is between rest and practicing and pushing your edge to get better, especially in co collegiate sports? Because this level is so high, we have school, we have a lot of demands. For sure. So how do you know where the where the balance is and where you're just breaking down muscle and going overboard. I mean, that, that's central to what we're trying to do. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to give you, you guys as student athletes the best opportunity to succeed. And, and, and by trying to capture an awareness um, in that recovery regeneration versus fitness and fatigue relationship, um, that's somewhere in that space we can look for optimal performance. So we're using a lot of metrics, a lot of data capture, wellness questionnaires. We're trying to understand yeah. sleep patterns. We ask you a lot of questions. We ask a lot of questions of all our 740 student athletes. And that's very intentional so that we can try and be uh, more, more, gain more insights and be more, more aware of what, what the practices are that people are going through. So we use external load monitoring. So our, our director of sports science, Matt Howley, he's driving a lot of our catapult GPS work with a number of our, our sports teams um, you know, to, to capture the external load. I know uh, Kevin Ricks with our hockey team and, and, and Tony Rolinski with our hockey team team is you need internal load measurement so heart rate um, 
and some of the biological and physiological measures. So, you know, we use a number of different methods to try and capture insights uh, to answer that golden bullet question that you're talking about because it's very different for everyone. Yeah. No two athletes are alike. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm becoming very aware of the challenges that Notre Dame presents from the demands of academics and, uh, you know, the, the management of how academics and athletics can be dovetailed together. So that's a really exciting performance question for me. So how real realistically do you see coaches making adjustments based on the feedback that they're receiving because that's kind of hard to do on a day-to-day -day basis um, when you're getting so many different answers from different athletes I've been really excited by our coaches um, you know we're making cultural shifts and, and we're looking at sports performance differently and I think you know our coaches are really embracing some of these new these new conversations and languages you know coach Kelly coach McGraw um, you know coach Corrigan a, a lot of our our, um, our coaches are really looking to gain these insights so they can have those really direct conversations with with an individual student athlete so I've been very excited by it you you know that those conversations will continue some of our our metrics and our data when we do our season reviews will will really enforce and empower the, the value of the, the metrics we've been collecting hopefully um, but yeah I've been really encouraged with with the early steps we've been making um, if I sort of reflect over the time I've been here and what's changed in this area one is what you guys have already talked about right did we realize now it's not just what happens in the sport activity that impacts performance. It's everything else. So we've made significant investments in nutrition. You've got us focused on understanding sleep better and, mm -hmm. and how we can how we can make sure we do that. Recovery, rehabilitation, a lot of the stuff that's, you know, people tend to think in, in the context of just the sport activity. The other two things are that I see you do so well is, one, recognizing that not only each sport is different, but each coach is different. Mm -hmm. They've got different priorities, different things they're trying to achieve that they need their athletes able to do. And the other is the awareness that within a team, there are different demands. So Rachel as a pitcher may have very different demands than the center fielder that you know, you're trying to address in your plan yep. for her. Or we're going to talk to Mike McGlinchey in a little while, and, and he's going to have a... A, you know, a, a different set of demands than James may have. How do you manage both that coach-specific input and the individual athlete plan? For sure. I mean, the, the first thing I, I always say is that each sport has got its own culture, you know, and, and you ne really need to peel back the layers of a sport to understand it and under uh, really be aware of the in integral pieces that, that make that sport tick and what the athletes are like and how the coaches act and you know I've, I've been humbled and privileged to be around of lots of different sports in, in my career and I've, I've gained some insights and I continue to gain insights today so for me the first part of it is, is really just digesting and, and, and not observing and, and, and really starting to understand what's the culture of the sports I'm, I'm obviously from the UK and North American sports carry a different set of cultures from other sports in the rest of the world so you know I, I've got to be sensitive to that and I think that's the driving point for me to begin with is what's, what's the culture um, and, and you know there's a sports culture and then there's a culture set by our own coaches um, and again it's, it's a sensitivity and awareness to what their, their ambitions are and how they're trying to achieve that so we, what I'm trying to do, you know, consequent to that is then really model and understand the individual nuances of position specific demands. Um, to you know sports demands if we're playing a different opponent how's that going to affect our our strategy and our our technical approach moving forward so it it, it sport is an ever changing fluid environment um, but i always say that there's an underpinning culture and I, I think it's critical to understand that culture you know softball is is a sport that i've i've not spent a lot of time around and i'm i'm learning that and i'm trying to upskill you know there's other sports that you know that the lacrosse teams again I've, i i hold my hands up and i say that's a, that's a steep learning curve for me to understand the nuances of that sport but I believe in order for me to support them effectively and also to put the message across of how we can potentially help them as support services I've got to understand what's underneath it and, and peel back the layers and really understand the, the, you know, the culture and the characteristics mm. I was in Coach Kelly's office after practice today and on his TV monitor mm -hmm. he's got an array of everybody on the team yep sort of like trading cards <laughs> and and with a series of numbers on the right hand side of every, every 
uh, student's picture that had a number of measures, that things that they're trying to track, like sleep. Mm -hmm. One of them was weight. Yes. And as the guys weighed themselves in on the locker room. I don't room, want that one. <laughs> I don't want that one. <laughs> as they weighed themselves in downstairs in the locker room, the post-practice weight would immediately appear on the screen. Oh, my gosh. And, and the change in weight would. What struck me about that system is how a lot of information, though, was being reduced to something you could consume quickly and visually and say, whoa, we got an we got an issue here with weight loss. We got an issue here with sleep. It was it was it was fascinating both the the amount of data that was there, but how easily consumable it was. For sure, and I think you know data visualization and data feedback is is key to me. Um, and and if a date you know if a data point or, or information around an athlete is is not presented in a, an efficient and, and speedy fashion, it's it's data that we're not we're not. You know, we're not used. collecting, right? So, um, yeah, we, we've managed with our system to, to set up those types of um, color, co you know, everyone reacts to a red, yellow, green, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a very simple response. But the, the great thing about those approaches is that all our staff, all our athletes and all our service providers can look through the same lens. Um, you know, so we can collect information, wellness or sleep, you know, monitoring or a weight. Um, and our nutritionist can understand that. Our head coach can understand it. The athlete themselves can understand it all by looking at the simple uh, color-coded metrics. And, and that's the power of what we're trying to do. And, you know, Coach Kelly in particular with 105 guys on a, on a single team, that's, that's a lot of management to keep up to speed with. But he's absolutely got, um, you know, he wants sensitivity of understanding where his guys are so he can have that conversation piece with them so that's something that is that sits in his office right now and we, we've got that going and he's very responsive to that is softball getting one of those soon i don't know I, you, you, are you on I coach me so. plus we are well, well then we ought to set this baby up <laughs> i think it's pretty funny though because on coach me plus it says it numbers one to ten after practice like right. how hard is it yeah. but by four they place hard hard at four so it's like if you if practice is hard you're like oh it's only a four out of ten and then it's like six is like really hard eights like i'm about to pass out <laughs> tens like we you, you standards, need to carry right? me we're off ambitious. the field <laughs> <laughs> we're ambitious <laughs> so i mean if it's a hard day you still look a little bit wimpish you're like oh it was only a four I think I think the key to it, uh, and, you know, I was uh, last Friday. I, I managed to to catch Coach Kelly, you know, getting out his car in the in the parking lot, and um, you know, he he immediately talked to me about the, how valuable it was to see these metrics because he could talk to a guy in the warm up and just you know touch him on the shoulder and say, hey, I, I noticed that you know <laughs> your sleep's been down or you're struggling with soreness or you know straight away it, it you know humanizes the conversation. Um, it shows that we care, you know, hopefully we, you know, it demonstrates we care that we, we're collecting this information, not for Big Brother, but because it's going to helpfully understand our student athletes and the individual, you know, characteristics that you're going through. And, and we can then be really strategic and intentional about how we help each individual. So how does one become the director of performance sciences? I mean, at what point in your career trajectory did you head in this direction and why right i mean yeah lots of hard work and stress i used to have a full head of hair all dropped out right um, no i mean it's 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 great to be here i'm very excited about being at notre dame i i got my phd in in exercise physiology at you know university of connecticut i've got to say that quietly or the coach mcgraw will, will go crazy yeah but we um, like coach diaco so that's okay yeah so um you know I, I graduated with a phd from the united states i went back to the uk and i was a strength and conditioning coach you know i was very interested in strength power you know physical performance i was you know a decent athlete but i never never made it as a pro athlete but i still had the same ambitions to succeed and, and try and look at human performance and how we optimize that and you know that's been very that's one of my values is how we drive human performance and, and looking at success um so i i moved into you know working with athletes and um i've been a strength and conditioning coach to a pretty high level um you know got some global recognition and i got to a point where i'd been around some very good programs you know programs that i think that's really operationally helping those athletes it's maximizing the performance and at the same time, mentioning no no names, you, you're around some programs that you think, hey, that you know that wasn't doing a great job. And um, you know, I got to a point in my career where I thought I'd love to have a go at 
you know, trying to align some of the pieces myself to, to support all our service providers in optimizing their work, you know, and, and helping to, to maximize their potential um, and what they're doing. So, you know, this, I was very lucky to, to get a call from, from Notre Dame and, um, you know, the rest is history. So it's, it's been really great. Do you wish you were still a competing athlete with like all the knowledge you have now that you didn't have before? Yeah, yeah it's. Do you wish um, you could go back in time? And uh, well, maybe not. I mean, it's uh, my body's you know creaking yeah, now, but I, I, feel I, it. I, I think it's um, you know I, it's 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 exciting for me. I, I like I say, one of my values is is success and, and high performance. However, you look at high performance, not necessarily in the sports arena, but you know just in in terms of how you write a thesis or how you you go about your day to day. It, it's 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 a mantra right and um, that's something that, that sits with me so uh, the the insights we can now gain with with some of the technologies and 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 how we understand physiology and how science is really starting to uh, give us some real insights into you know biology physiology psychology cognition etc etc I, it, it makes me salivate because I think <laughs> with all that ammunition how can we not try to help our how our athletes succeed yeah. I, I gotta say, if if Rachel offered me the opportunity to turn back the clock, and I and and my hair came with it, I'd be I'd be all for it. I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd jump on that if I got the hair back. So, um, one final question. You know, you uh, I'm going to give you the ultimate softball question, captured for posterity on video. It's on the radio. People hear it. What's the one thing you need from the AD to take the next step? In sports performance at Notre Dame. Um, well, you put me on the spot, right? <laughs> I put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna be regretting this later. <laughs> I I always say, um, you know, I'm gonna dodge this bullet a little bit, but I always say the church is not the building; the church is the people. And and what I mean by that is it's about the vision and it's about pulling and uniting everyone to the same mission and the same cause. Now we, we can talk about the great facilities that we have in here at Notre Dame, but you know it's an arms race in sports performance. It, you know, things are turning over so fast. Our our competitors are, are building facilities, are employing different people, are engaging with different technologies. But for me, the biggest thing that an athletic director can do. Is, is drive the vision and make the people of the church go in the same direction. Um, because by engaging people on a single mission and a, and a single identity, it laser focuses our, our ambitions. And, um, you know, that, that's key to, to me. I love, the, I love the analogy. You're going to have to start calling me Father Jack. <laughs> Father Jack, <laughs> the whole church, you have the whole, it. The whole church and congregation deal. Duncan, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, I, I love you. these conversations. Uh, I always learn so much from them. And thanks for all you're doing for Notre Dame and its students. Appreciate it. I can't Thank wait to work both. with you more. Yeah, we'll be back in a minute. Thanks. You use the crowd's energy, and it really just pumps me up, pumps my team up. Just to have your emotions heighten your stomach, it's a nervous, excited feeling. It gets your adrenaline pumping. All right, let's bring it, Irish. Defense wins this game. Work for each other, play for At that moment in time, we all know that we're there for each other. Irish on three. One, two, three. Irish!